Once identified as the second best recruit in the class of 2018, ahead of all-stars like Zion, Darius Garland, and ahead of 20-point-per-game scorers like Tyler Hero and Fernie Simons and Keldon Johnson, Cam Reddish was a serious talent. Many likened Cam's game to Paul George, and that's a serious compliment, but it's not hard to see why. Their smooth handles, jump shot, athleticism, and defense are all very similar. So when you're compared to Paul George, there's big things expected of you. And even after a subpar year at Duke, people, myself included, were still convinced on his all-star potential. But fast forward to now and things are not panning out for Reddish the way you'd think they would have. The question is what's happening to Cam Reddish, the next Paul George, and what the hell is going to happen next? Well, let's talk about it. The Cam Reddish case is one of the most puzzling cases to me. Drafted 10th overall by the Hawks in 2019, he started really slow, but it was clear that the potential was abundant. In his rookie season, his shot selection was all over the place. Garbage, horrible, whatever you want to call it. But the talent was clear. The smooth shot making, the defense, the athletic ability, this was all on show in his rookie year. Just not to the level of consistency that you would like it to be. So in year two, there was plenty of expectations for him coming off a subpar rookie year. And unfortunately, he didn't live up to them. It also didn't help that he tore his Achilles like halfway through the season. Not the greatest thing to rebound from a poor rookie year, is it? But on the bright side, in the ECF against the Milwaukee Bucks, I remember watching that thinking, where the hell did he come from? I thought he tore his ACL. He absolutely cooked up, especially in game six where he hit about five or six threes, and he looked like the player that everybody thought he could be coming out of Duke. At minimum in this game, he showed the ability to be an elite level role player at the NBA level, which of course is desired by every organization. But you could see that there was something else still there. So in year three, coming off that incredible playoff series, I expected a lot from Reddish, and he delivered somewhat. It was his best season in a Hawks uniform from top to bottom, but it wasn't anything near what we saw in that short time span of the playoff series against the Bucks. The Hawks really didn't help his case though, they were just using him off the bench as a spark plug, which he can fit that role, but you'd think that there would be more for him to give to an organization, especially this young in his career, it seemed like they were kind of giving up on his superstar potential. And that's exactly what they did, because they shipped him out to New York within the halfway point of the season. Overall in Atlanta, it didn't seem like they gave him a fair opportunity at all, apart from when he was a rookie. And we know we can't judge players' complete potential of what they can be just off what they showed as a rookie. Otherwise, some of the best players we've known would be nowhere near what they became. So with all things considered, him getting traded to the Knicks seemed like a good fit. He got to play with his old college buddy RJ Barrett in the bright lights of MSG, similar to a Duke environment in some senses in terms of the talent and the pressure of the situation. But this trade definitely hasn't gone as planned. You know, looking back on it, you could have rung the alarm bells when literally damn near the first week that Reddish came there, Tom Thibodeau, there were rumors that he didn't even want him. And when you get traded there and you're excited for a new situation and the coach that you get traded to doesn't even want you, I mean, you might as well just go get traded again. Like, what's the point? And in his Nick spell, it's been pretty evident that Tibbs doesn't really fancy him that much. He barely got any rotational minutes in his first year with the Knicks, and when he did, he showed a good amount of promise, but that wasn't enough for Thibodeau. It also didn't help when he went out injured again when he was just starting to gain some traction. And this year, year two has made even less sense. Reddish absolutely pops off his first game, dropping 22 off the bench, against the former two-seed Memphis Grizzlies of last season, and he hits a game-tying corner three to put the game into overtime. I was thinking, damn, this is actually Cam's year. He's going to finally break out, and everybody's going to see how great he was. But clearly, Thibodeau did not care at all. And throughout the season, he seemed to be playing fine in a primarily bench and scoring defensive role, being pretty efficient at the same time, the most efficient he's been in his career. Then out of nowhere, his minutes just get cut, and Thibodeau says that he's completely out of the rotation. As if it's solely Cam, that's the reason that the Knicks are losing games. That makes a ton of sense, buddy. It seems like everywhere Cam goes, people think that he's the sole problem, but that's really not the case at all. 
Cam is still young, not even 24 years old, and he's had plenty of injuries in his career. So that number and the amount of time he's played is even less. To develop a guy like that, that's just not fair. In the league, he's still shown as well that he's capable enough to be getting consistent rotational minutes on a decent NBA team. But right now, he's not even getting that. Of course, he's prone to inefficient nights and lack of effort, but what good player in the NBA is not? He hasn't been properly developed. And I, for one, still believe in Cam's ability to be something great in this league. There's been rumors he could get traded. I think if he went to somewhere like Miami, that would be perfect. Dallas, who needs a spark off the bench. Brooklyn, the same. And I think the perfect fit for Cam would be, unfortunately, the Golden State Warriors. If the Warriors got a hold of Cam, I'm confident they could develop him into a similar Andrew Wiggins type role. And that would be extremely frightening as a Memphis Grizzlies fan to see, but that would probably be the best case scenario. The moral of the story is Cam still has a lot left in the tank. He hasn't been properly developed in his time in the NBA, and if he's given the right opportunity, I'm sure he could show why he was one of the best high school players in the class of 2018. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to learn about some more exciting young players and teams, and guys that just don't get the media coverage that they deserve for how good they are, then this is the place for you. I've been trying to put out two videos a week of consistent NBA content like this, so if that interests you, then consider hitting a like and a sub. And as always, stay rested. See you in the next one.